The national debate over a same-sex marriage took another turn this week when a federal judge ruled a voter-approved ban in California is unconstitutional. Ted Olson argued and won the case, which surprised a lot of people because he is a leading conservative lawyer who was Solicitor General under George W. Bush. Mr. Olson joins us now from Wisconsin. Mr. Olson, let's start with the issue of judicial activism. Seven million Californians voted for Proposition 8. Seven million people voted to amend the state constitution to ban same-sex marriage. Now a single judge overrules all of them? Well, that's why we have judges. That's why we have an independent judiciary. We do not put the Bill of Rights to a vote. Forty-one states once prohibited interracial marriages uh, so that in Virginia, when the Supreme Court finally struck that uh, prohibition down, the president's parents could not have been married. Our fundamental rights, the part of our Constitution is a separation of powers and an independent judiciary. We ask judges to make sure that when we vote for something, we're not depriving minorities of their constitutional rights. And that's what the judge did. But as a leading conservative lawyer, you have condemned such judicial activism in the past. Let's take a look at what you said in 2007. Judges have taken some of those decisions off the policy table taking them away from the people by constitutionalizing these issues. Question, isn't that exactly what Judge Walker did in this case? No, as a matter of fact, since 1888, the United States Supreme Court has 14 times decided and articulated that the right to marriage is a fundamental right. We're not talking about a new right here. We're talking about whether a fundamental right, something that's, that the Supreme Court has characterized as the most fundamental relationship we have in this country, can be deprived of certain individuals because of the color of their skin or because of their sexual orientation. We do not permit discrimination, inequality. That's why we have a 14th Amendment that guarantees equal rights to all citizens. It's not judicial activism when judges judges do what the Constitution requires them to do, and they follow the precedent of previous decisions of the Supreme Court. But, but uh, Mr. Olson, you have also said this. Judges should, quote, interpret the law, not make it up, not create new rights that weren't there in the Constitution. Where is the right to, you've talked about the right to marriage, where is the right to same-sex marriage in the Constitution? Where is the right to interracial marriage in the Constitution, Chris? The Supreme Court has said that marriage, the right to marry a person of your choice, is a part of liberty, privacy, association, and spirituality guaranteed to each individual under the Constitution. When you say same-sex marriage, you're saying um, a particular type of marriage. The Supreme Court has looked at marriage and has said that the right to marry is a fundamental right for all citizens. So you call it interracial marriage and then you could prohibit it? No, the Supreme Court has said no. The same thing here, the judge after hearing three weeks of testimony and a full day of closing arguments and listening to experts from all over the world concluded that the denial of the right to marry to these individuals in California hurt them and did not advance the cause of opposite sex marriage. This is what judges are expected to do. It is not judicial activism. It is judicial uh, responsibility in its classic sense. So, so society doesn't get to say that marriage should be between a man and a woman, even though society has said that for thousands of years. Seven million people in California don't get to say that marriage is between a man and a woman, even though just uh, November of 2008, seven million Californians voted that they wanted to change their own state constitution to say just that. In the 1960s, uh, an equivalent number, it's a smaller number, but of Californians voted to change their constitution to say that you could discriminate on the basis of race in the sale of your home. The United States Supreme Court struck that down. If seven million Californians were to decide that we should have separate but equal schools, or that we would send some of our citizens to separate drinking fountains, or have them um, be in the back of the bus, that would be unconstitutional. 
if if we didn't have a separation of powers, if we didn't have a Bill of Rights, then seven million Californians could take away your rights or my rights or the rights of these citizens in California. But we do have a Bill of Rights and it's intended to protect us. The 14th Amendment was the result that uh, the 14th Amendment that guarantees due process and equal protection to all citizens, to all persons, was the result of a civil war intended to enforce the promise of our Constitution that all men and women are created equal. The judge is simply fulfilling that promise, that American promise, the leading expert on the other side said that we would, when we stop this discrimination, America would be more true to its ideals. That's exactly what happened here. When, when new Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan was up for a solicitor general last year, she said this, Mr. Olson, there is no federal constitutional right to same-sex marriage. Was now Justice well, Kagan wrong at that time? Well, what she was expressing is that the issue had never come before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court had never decided that question. And she was correct that the Supreme Court has not addressed that question. The Supreme Court will address that, que uh, that question at some day in the future, probably in this case. But Mr. Olson, she will you, have you, an opportunity. you certainly are against judicial activism. What, how do you define what is judicial activism and what isn't? Well, most people uh, use the term judicial activism to explain decisions that they don't like. Exactly. What the court has done here... I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No, no, I just said exactly. Uh, th th that's that's yes. how most people do define it. Yes, and, and what the court decided here, the Supreme Court, as I said, of the United States, um, uh, has 14 times decided that the fundamental right to marry is an important constitutional right. The judge applied that right, that existing right, that fully uh, determined and repeatedly determined constitutional right to some tens of thousands of citizens in California who are being harmed by discrimination. That is not judicial activism, that is judicial responsibility. Uh, here's where some people see a comparison to the battle over abortion. The political process in the case of same-sex marriage was working. Five states in Washington, D.C. have legalized same-sex marriage. Now, instead of letting this be decided on a state-by-state -state basis, you are, in effect, pushing the courts to preempt the argument, which is exactly what they did in Roe v. Wade. Well, would you like your right to free speech? Would you like Fox's right to free press, put up to a vote, and say, well, if five states have approved it, let's wait till the other 45 states do. These are fundamental constitutional rights. The Bill of Rights guarantees Fox News and you, Chris Wallace, the right to speak. It's in the Constitution. And the Supreme Court has repeatedly held that the denial of our citizens of the equal rights to equal access to justice under the law is a violation of our fundamental rights. Yes, it's encouraging that many states are moving towards equality on the basis of sexual er uh, orientation. And I am very, very pleased about that because it is extraordinarily damaging to our citizens, our family members, our brothers, our sisters, our co-workers, and our neighbors when they are labeled second-class citizens. When the state of California, as it did in this case, enshrined in its constitution a separate status for certain of its citizens, it did immeasurable harm. We can't wait for the voters to decide that that immeasurable harm that is unconstitutional must finally be eliminated. I applaud the fact that things are changing, and I think this case is helping open people's eyes to the damage done by discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. Uh, uh, All we have to do is look into the eyes of these individuals and decide why are we de denying them the right to have happiness that we accord to all of our other citizens. M Mr. Olson, uh, we're beginning to run out of time, so I, I want to get through a few, few issues with you. Let's look at the process going forward. Why uh, not allow the judge's ruling in this case to stay on hold until the matter is settled? Why push as you are to, to uh, activate the ruling? It'll cause a, a flood of same-sex marriages uh, that when, when they may soon be ruled or may later be ruled unconstitutional, or rather that they may, the ruling may be reversed. Well, the judge decided overwhelmingly that all of the evidence supported ending this discrimination now. The judge decided that this 
discrimination hurts individuals every single day, every single moment of their life. But but, but he, did put his ruling, he did put his ruling uh, on hold. You're, put, you're pressing for that, that hold to be ended, uh, the stay to be ended, so that uh, people can get same-sex marriages tomorrow. Chris, he, had, he put his decision on hold until he could hear from us as to why it shouldn't be put on hold. Yesterday, the Attorney General of California and the Governor of California both said that the decision should go into effect immediately. In other words, the, the Chief Executive Officer and the Chief Legal Officer of the State of California said it's time to end this discrimination. California will not be hurt if we stop discriminating now. We agree with that. We believe that the individuals that we represent and tens of thousands of other Californians should not any longer be denied their constitutional rights. And we hope the judge decides to allow his decision to go forward.